Hello and welcome back to our unit on weather. So our unit for today is weather once again. Our third day of notes, our topic, cloud formation. So today you're going to know the four ways clouds can form. Okay. You will also understand coalescence in the four kinds of precipitation. And you know the different severe low pressure systems and their characteristics. All right, here we go. For your quick write, how do you think raindrops form in clouds? Why do mountains receive more rain and snow? Okay. And then, what do you think clouds are made of? Okay. Or some ways clouds might form. Go ahead and pause this while you do your quick write. Okay. I'm going to move on. All right. So cloud formation. When air rises, whenever air rises, it cools, condenses, and reaches the dew point temperature. So whenever humid air rises, clouds form. There's four ways we can make air to rise. Okay. There's orographic lifting, frontal wedging, convergence, localized convective lifting. Okay. Let's examine these a little bit more uh, further here. So convective lifting. Well, it's simple as this. The sun heats the land, okay, and the land heats the air above it, and air rises, okay, and as air rises, it cools, and at the dew point temperature, okay, we get clouds, okay, so there you have it. Convective lifting, it's just hot air rising as a result of heated surface or land, okay, so that's convective lifting. And then the next one is orographic lifting. Mountains force air to rise, and as it rises, it cools and condenses, and once again, okay, it hits that dew point temperature, and we get clouds, okay? So, orographic lifting. All right? So, mountains cause air to rise. Convergence, okay? Well, sound, it's just like it sounds, okay? The air collides, and when two air masses collide, guess what? It goes straight up. And whenever air rises, once again, it cools and condenses, forming clouds. And convergence, therefore, is another way we get clouds. Okay? So long as the air rises above the dew point temperature. All right, frontal wedging. This is one of the main ways we get storms and clouds. Okay, you may have heard of weathermen saying we have a cold front coming through. Well, these fronts, okay, consist of two different air masses. Warmer, lighter air hits cold, heavy air, and it rises over it. They don't mix. The warmer, lighter air is forced upward over the colder, heavy air, and once again, it hits that dew point temperature, and we get clouds, okay? So that's frontal wedging, when warmer, lighter air hits colder, heavy air, and rises. All right, so let's look at this. The doldrums here. Air is hitting here and convergence, right? Frontal wedging. Warm air is being pushed over colder air and we get frontal wedging. Okay, another way we get clouds here. All right, here's cold air over here. Warm air going up over the cold air. And okay, we get frontal wedging. Or graphic lifting. But there's another way this one formed. Two ways, right? We got convergence as well. Okay? Convergence. All right. So, what are the four ways clouds can form? All right. Summarize this information, please. On your notes, question goes on the left-hand side. Answer goes on the right-hand side. Okay, use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, precipitation. Any moisture that falls from the air to the earth's surface is called precipitation. That's right, precipitation. There's four major kinds. There's uh, rain, as you guys have all experienced, and I'm sure most of you at some point have seen snow. Uh, hail, hopefully. Okay, and then there's sleet, which is basically frozen rain. Okay, so for your notes, what is precipitation? You guys should already kind of know this, I think. But go ahead and write it for your notes. Question on the left-hand side. Answer on the right-hand side. Okay, use the answer bank to determine which words 
best complete the sentence. So that is precipitation. Go ahead and pause this. I'm going to move on. All right, coalescence. You ever wonder how a raindrop forms? Well, they form through a process called coalescence. A raindrop is the combination of smaller cloud droplets coming together to form one large rain droplet. Okay, so as the lar as larger droplets grow, they fall, picking up even more droplets in the process. Let's look at this a little bit more in depth here. So, how do we go from a little tiny cloud droplet here to this huge rain droplet over here? Okay, well, it's called coalescence, right? We have little tiny cloud droplets, and water is a sticky chemical. They like to stick together, okay? And these things coalesce or come together. Okay, and making a rain droplet. And eventually, gravity takes over and pulls the heavy, large raindrop down. All right, and there you go. And you feel it as rain, right? Okay, so that's coalescence. So, question on the left-hand side. Answer on the right-hand side. All right, use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the blank. All right, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on here. All right, severe weather is any weather that may cause property damage or a loss of life. Severe weather may include large quantities of rain, lightning, or hail, strong winds, or tornadoes. So, in reality, okay, uh, most people don't realize it, but lightning storms cause more damage than hurricanes or tornadoes combined because they're so frequent. Okay, so severe co weather causes billions of dollars in damage each year. Okay, so severe weather. Let's look at these. A thunderstorm is accompanied by rain, thunder, lightning, and strong winds. We get a couple thunderstorms usually a year. A thunderstorm is an extreme low-pressure system. On average, 44 deaths occur each year from lightning-related incidents. Because they're so common, thunderstorms kill more people each year than hurricanes and tornadoes combined. So they're actually pretty dangerous, and you don't want to be outside on a severe thunderstorm. So lightning formation. How does lightning form? Let's take a little bit further look here. Okay. In calm clouds, the charges, okay, the ionic charges are randomly distributed, okay, pluses and minuses everywhere, okay. But during thunderstorms, updrafts from wind, okay, blow constantly, and during this, okay, positively charged particles, these these updrafts push the positive charges up top, and the negative charge are separated, okay. So those updrafts separate the charges. Okay, so the positive and negative charges are now separated by the updrafts. Okay. Well, since opposites attract, okay, the charges are pulled down to the surface. So positive and negative charges here are trying to attract each other. Because these positive and negative charges attract, the result is a flow of negative charges. Well, guess what that flow of negative charges is? It's lightning. That's right. Okay. So there you have it. That's how lightning forms. Okay. Like I said, the result is a flash of electricity called lightning. Okay. All right. So what is lightning? There you go for your notes. Question on the left hand side. Answer on the right hand side. Use the answer bank to determine which words best complete that blank right there. Go ahead and pause it. I'm going to move on while you write. Okay. All right, tornado. A tornado is the most violent and shortest lived severe storm or low pressure system in the world. It is basically a destructive rotating column of air that has very high winds producing a funnel shaped cloud. Okay, so the winds of a tornado can get up to 400 kilometers. You're looking at an F5, right? Usually everything in a tornado's path is destroyed. We have a scale to measure tornadoes. It's the Fujita scale and an F1 being the weakest. Okay, California, we have received, we get F1s from time to time. We have yet to see an F5, though, and an F5 is the strongest tornado. You don't want to be anywhere near an F5, right? So how do tornadoes form? Well, tornadoes are the result of really cold, dry air coming down from Canada, okay, where it meets warm, humid air from the Gulf of Mexico, and you get a front, you get a, these extreme low-pressure systems, okay, and the result is what we call Tornado Alley this area or region of the United States that gets tornadoes frequently. So, Tornado Alley. 
All right, hurricanes. Well, you've probably heard of hurricanes or the famous one, Hurricane Katrina. A hurricane is a tropical storm. They actually form off the coast of Africa. They make it all the way over to us. So hurricanes do not have warm and cold fronts. Okay, hurricanes develop over warm tropical water where tremendous amounts of evaporation release tremendous amounts of heat and energy forming a huge, massive, low-pressure system. Like I said, they're huge. They cover about 700 kilometers in diameter and can have winds that can reach up to 275 kilometers okay, an hour along the eye wall. Okay, so they don't get winds like tornadoes, but they're huge storms. And because they're huge, they cause a lot of destruction. They are the most destructive storms on Earth. Okay, so those are hurricanes. So, hurricanes form from the, off the coast of Africa, where warm ocean water evaporates. Okay, where warm ocean temperatures cause massive amounts of evaporation. Right over here. Okay, well, we learned about the winds. Okay, the trade winds blow the hurricane toward the Gulf of Mexico and the United States. Okay, and so the storm ends up in the Gulf of Mexico or the eastern seaboard of the United States. Okay, so here's Hurricane Katrina, one of the most famous Katrina, um, hurricanes because of all the damage it caused. One of the most costly um, weather events in the United States history, Hurricane Katrina. Okay. All right, so the last one for today is, what are the three types of severe low-pressure systems? Okay, question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the blanks there. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay. Go ahead and summarize. You can do your own or you can always do mine. Okay. And for 20 points, go ahead and finish your notes up. Okay. Day three. And we'll see you next time for day four. Have a great evening. Please pause this now.